all basic and advanced rules and the optional rules are listed below. This is a playthrough using the logs I played. You can find the complete playthrough on my Patreon account for absolutely free as the same real time things. I made quite a few mistakes playing through, but you'll see at the beginning of the game to the end of the game, you're going to see a progression, I promise. All right, so we're on turn seven, and we're doing the... So that means we start with the spawning phase, or the remove spot phase. And this is turn seven. So NATO troops only have three units and two commands. Soviets have 14 commands. And now I'm placing commands. There's that indirect fire combination. And I'm giving this unit down here. Let me let me pull in. See if I can. All right, and let's do this. So I'm going to make this smaller in the next one, so we can see what's going on over here. All right. So I gave this unit over here a command, a move command. It's right down here. And now I'm doing the Soviet command. So the Soviets, there are now no vehicles in the east side of the village on the west side of the board. So the Soviets are starting to move their troops forward. And we're only on turn seven. I'm actually just zooming in. Okay, there we go. More, another move command there. Another move command. Another move command. More move commands. Another move command. Move, move. So this turn has a lot of movement. And those are my units over there on Overwatch. I don't know if I even have any fire commands for the Soviets. I don't know if I have any fire commands for anybody. Okay, so we're doing some range checks here. Let me pull back. There we go. Okay. So there we go, we have the initiative phase now. So the observer is uh, NATO rolls a 38 on the initiative. There's no indirect fire for the Soviets, but there is their U.S. indirect fire. I'm checking the range. I could do indirect fire there, and I am going to do indirect fire there. Here's NATO's indirect fire. So I need, in order to get accurate, in order to get an indirect fire response, I need six or greater with a unit quality plus one. So die roll modifier. So I basically need to roll five or greater on a 10 sided dice. And we have response, so there is going to be an incoming fire over there now. So here's the numbers for the indirect fire. It's going to be short range. The GP, the general purpose offense number is going to be four. The general purpose defense number is going to be eight. And remember that there is no two hit die roll. You just roll for the effect. So a 74 or greater to get suppression result and a 107 or greater to get effective result. Now we have to check for our die roll modifiers. So it's minus 20 die roll modifier because it's an armor target type. Moving target, minus 20 die roll modifier. And unit quality, plus five, gives us a minus 35 die roll modifier. So it's gonna be next to impossible to have any effect on this vehicle. 
So I rolled a 70, which is a 35, and that's no effect. That's it for indirect fire. And nobody's doing direct fire right now, which is odd. And I just remove the indirect fire mod, the mod of markers. NATO lost the initial in, initiative, so they're going to move first. I'm moving the Bradley that's on the far side of the southern hill. And there's its move now. It's gone into the line of sight. And it's seen. There's too many units that have a line of sight to it. I don't think I need to roll here. Okay, so it stops there. Now we have another initiative roll. Nature roll 64, the Soviets roll 37. And again, I'm using a special initiative where during the movement and the fire phase for all initiatives, except for the initial move or fire, I roll for. So the, the first initiative gives an advantage to those who win it and that in the indirect fire and in the direct fire phase and the direct fire, direct fire, and the movement phase they get the advantage but after that first move or fire in each phase it alter it doesn't alternate you get a dice roll nato one so soviet moves now and you now the unit that's moving is going to be up here i believe right there So I want to leave the light woods, so I have to roll a bog check. I need it because it's light woods. I need a 1 through 20 with the die roll modifier of plus 2 because of the type of vehicle. Actually, no, that should be a plus 5. And no bog. And there's my move. So I'm moving this forward. There's nobody now to fire at them. So they move forward. And here's another unit you know, that moved forward right there. Them. They move forward. And yet another unit moved forward. So NATO's basically moving, uh, not NATO, but the Soviets are moving all their units forward. And that unit, actually, those two units, or is that two or one? Those two tanks are actually right on the outskirts of the town. Now we see the NATO move. And these, all these are initiatives and moves, initiatives and moves. So what I did is I put this unit in full cover and this unit moved. It went back here up to that brick building and I put it in full cover. The movement phase is over. All these units right here that I marked move, they didn't move anywhere. Now you can give a move command and then you don't have to you don't have to move it, however, and it does make it a moving target. So Okay, now here, here I'm doing the other moves now. There you go. Okay, so you see all the Soviet units lined up, ready, ready to advance on the road. Just adjusting counters here. Actually, what I can do is I can pause the recording while I do those. So I think we're going to do next time.
this just encounters. Okay, so now I want to, I'm checking the range here for some reason. I'm doing a spotting attempt. Remember, spotting attempts can occur anytime during the turn. Now, the reason I have to do a spotting attempt is even though that's close, there's only one unit spotting right there. And that is a recon unit, so I, I rolled a 93. And 93 is not spotted right there. All right, so I would actually have three rolls for three different tanks. So I spotted two of those units. So I only recognized two of those units. And I'm marking them spot moved. And over here, I'm checking to see, now since there's only two units spying, I'm checking to see if any of these vehicles are spotted. Got a 90, a 68, a 5, and a 6. So all three of those are spotted. I marked them spot moved. Over here, that line of sight is blocked because of that which goes right along the woods hex side. But there's still so there's only one unit to spot that. I need a 9 here below, and both units are spotted. Spotting over attempt over here, 90 needed, and both units are spotted. And it's just spotting in the other direction. And that unit's in the open, spotted. And turn phase. Now all I'm going to do here is adjust full cover. So I don't think, so I put this suppressed unit under full cover. Oops. Now this is key. All the Soviet units, the, the Soviet command tank is right here. Soviet, this is the Soviet command tank moving around. And all Soviet units have to be within six hexes of that. But as you see, they have units that are not within six hexes of that. See, that unit's actually not within nine hexes of that. And so they have units off command span, so that means only half their units can have move commands. Now, if you look over here on the left, I move these infantry units out of full cover. Because if they're in full cover, you can't have a move command or a short haul command. And I want these guys to start moving out with the rest of the units and get everyone back in command span. I'm just cleaning up a little bit. This unit right here on top of the hill, just no one has line of sight to it. Now we're doing suppression recovery. So the suppression was off. So I want to roll a base because this is a veteran unit. You can look this up on the charts. I believe I have to roll a base 60. However, there's a plus 20, 20 die roll modifier because that because that had a command. No. No plus 20 die roll modifiers, so it's just a base 1 through 60, and that suppression is recovered. If you do anything other than there, no command, there's a penalty. Success, so that's suppression marker goes away entirely. So when a unit is suppressed, it's a two-sided marker. The turn the unit that get the turn the unit gets suppressed, it's placed on its on side. At the end, very end of that turn, there's a phase where that's either pre where that's either If that marker is if it's already on the offside, you remove to see, roll to see if that marker is removed completely. 
Now it's a turret adjustment phase. And this all occurs during the turret. So right here, I turned the Bradley's turret so that it could face possible targets up here. And face fire. It also gives, if you turn your turret toward an opponent, it also gives the advantage that the turret front arm is usually stronger. That's turn seven. Okay. So that's it for turn seven. I thank you very much. And I want everybody to have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you. Bye-bye.